Welcome to Simple Christianity. Today I am going to show you how to overcome sin in your life. Perhaps you are struggling with a besetting sin. You have tried everything, but this thing keeps tormenting you. You are not here by accident. God wants to show you the way out. Perhaps you are struggling with an addiction. Whatever it is that is harassing you today, you feel guilt, you feel shame at times. You have tried to stop, but this thing keeps coming back. You are not here by accident. God wants to show you the way out. Do you live in agony over your struggle against sin? Are you often discouraged? Do you feel like a failure? Do you feel like you are wasting a lot of your time in life? God, through His Word, wants to show you the way to defeat sin in your life. It all starts with God. You have to know what God has done for you, what God has granted you to overcome sin in your life. In Romans 6, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is asking you a question. In verse 1, are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? Far from it. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? To continue to live in sin and rebellion against God is not an option. This is why you are miserable when you fall into sin and backslide in your Christian walk. Romans 8 defines those who surrender to sinful passions as those who walk according to the flesh. And if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Christians do not give up on the fight against sin. They might struggle, but they fight on. They put to death the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God. But the question remains, how do you put this into practice? As I said from the beginning, you have to know what God has done for you. Romans 6 says in verse 3, Do you not know? Do you not know? You have to know this, that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the gl glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. This is what God has done for you. When Christ died for your sins, he not only paid for your sins, but you are now identified with him in death. Baptism signifies an immersion. It is an identification this is a dry baptism. It is a spiritual event. You died with Christ. And you are now risen with Him through His resurrection to a new life. This is a spiritual reality. God did this in the sphere of the Spirit. Just as Christ was risen, you too might now walk in a new life. This is a positional truth. Meaning, God has declared it. God has done it, irrespective of how your experience goes. It's a spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It is a spiritual reality. Now, you have to know it. You have to apply it by faith. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you have to trust in God and in the power that works in you, the power of the Spirit of God. Verse 5, For if we have become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with Him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for the one who died is freed from sin. Know this, again in verse 6, you must know this. The old self is crucified. 
you are free from sin. Don't you know, my friend, that your old self has died? You are crucified with Christ. It is no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. In the life that you now live, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. Again, you need to know this. Let's continue with Romans 6, verse 11. So you too consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You must also consider, you must also consider, verse 12, therefore sin is not to reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the parts of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your body parts as instruments of righteousness for God, for sin shall not be master over you. So here is what you need to do. First, you need to know, verse 3 and verse 6. Second, you need to consider as it says in verse 11, you must reckon yourselves to be dead unto sin. You must recognize this. The word in the Greek, the tense implies do it continuously. As a habit of life, reckon this, recognize it, consider it. And the third thing, you must practice. You must do it, live it, present your body parts to God. Verse 13, present the parts of your body no longer to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. Instead, present them to God. This is how God works throughout the Bible. God enters into a covenant with you and he says, these are the terms of the agreement. I am the example to follow my holy character, my glorious nature. I am the pattern to follow. Follow me. God says, I have revealed myself to you by granting you favor. I have done mighty things for you. I have extended my grace, Greek, charis. I have extended my grace to you. Now ex I expect your faith, your faithfulness, Greek, pistis. I expect your faithfulness. Your aim now is to be like Jesus, to run the race with your eyes set on Him, the author and finisher of your faith. Now that you know it, you have to recognize it and you have to put it into practice. So let's get very practical. You cannot present the parts of your bodies like your eyes and your ears to filth and expect to overcome sin in your life. You need to stop watching filth on your TV, computer, and phone. You must stop watching and listening to those who glorify and justify evil. You need to watch what you are watching and what you are hearing. You need to watch who you hang out with. Consider this. Who is influencing who? Any relationship that influences you in the negative has to be limited or sometimes eliminated. Stop deceiving yourself. If you're not influencing them, they are influencing you. You have to stop. Instead, you need to present yourselves to God. Every day, wake up with a plan to be a blessing to others. You plan how you will be an instrument of righteousness, love, grace, truth, justice, and so on. You start your day by presenting yourself to God in prayer, worship, and thanksgiving. Present your bodies as instruments of doing what is right for God. Start doing good to all people, especially to those of the household of faith. Let's recapitulate. First, you have to know it. Second, you have to consider it. Third, you have to live it. 
And lastly, you have to trust the Holy Spirit who works mightily in you to accomplish it. The scripture says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. You must always be Spirit conscious. It is He who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. This is it for now. But in our next lecture, we are going to do a session on how to pray and meditate on God's Word to overcome sin. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments below. And if this lecture has been beneficial to you, share it with someone else. Don't forget to give us a like and to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, may you continue to grow into Him who is the head, even Christ.